Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and in this video I'm going to talk about the chloroplast. That's the organelle found in plants where photosynthesis takes place. A great place to find them would be in the leaf of a tree. So if we look at that in cross-section, we're going to have a number of cells, and these are going to be the organelles found within that cell. They've got a structure that we'll talk about in just a second, but it's important to understand that they're not fixed within the cell. They can move around. And so if we apply a little bit of light to a cell, all of the chloroplasts will line up so they can get the maximum amount of light. If we apply too much light to that cell, they'll hide on the sides of the cell. Uh, they're doing that to protect themselves from damage, but they're not alone. If we look at a chloroplast, it's going to be surrounded by a set of mitochondria that will follow it throughout the cell. And the reason they're following it is they need the energy. They need the energy that was once in the sun and is now in molecules like glucose. The structure of a mitochondria is pretty simple. They've got two membranes around the outside and then they're filled with stroma. It's gonna be this liquid on the inside. Inside that liquid, we've got ribosomes. They've got their own genome, so they have their own DNA. But most of the action is going to take place along the thylakoid membrane. We have a series of these membranes and when they're stacked up, it makes a structure inside called the granum. If we look specifically at one granum, that's where everything is taking place. We have both the light reaction and the Calvin cycle. I won't go into the specifics of photosynthesis, but if we think about the Calvin cycle, what's the function of that? Well, a plant is taking in carbon dioxide and we want to add energy to that molecule. We're making something like glucose. When I say adding energy to it, what do I mean? We're adding high energy electrons. And so there are bonds between the carbon and the hydrogen in glucose. And so we have to add energy to those electrons. Where is that energy coming from? Originally, it's coming from the sun. Where does this all take place? It takes place along the thylakoid membrane. So we're going to zoom in to this rectangle right here and what we'll find is there's a membrane but there's also a series of proteins that's going to be everything in purple one of the most famous ones is ATP synthase but we also have these giant antenna complexes those are going to be proteins that are filled with pigments one of the most famous ones obviously is chlorophyll and so as we let Sun hit that membrane what's going on well the energy of those photons is used to get the chlorophyll excited and it's passing its electrons down an electron transport chain now there's a few other things in play. We've got a series of protons. Protons are going to be atoms of hydrogen that are missing their electrons. And we also have water. So water that's taken in in photosynthesis. And so as these electrons get excited, they move down an electron transport chain and we really have a hole right here. So we have to get more electrons to fill that hole and that comes from the water. So watch carefully what happens right here is that we break that water apart. We're making oxygen. That's the oxygen that a plant gives off. We're also donating these electrons and we're making some more of these protons. If we watch specifically what happens to one of those electrons, that went really fast. Let's go back and look at that again. If we watch that electron, what it's doing is as it moves through this electron transport chain, is it's using its energy, because it's gained energy right here, to pump a proton from the outside to the inside of the thylakoid membrane. Now we have a bunch of positive charges on the inside. They would like to leave, and the only way to leave is to go through ATP synthase. As you do that, you generate ATP. Let's watch another electron go through. So we see that same thing occur, but where did the electron go? Well, we give it even more energy after it goes through this electron uh, transport chain, and then that electron eventually goes to a carrier molecule. You can see that everything is positioned perfectly. It's outside the thylakoid membrane in the stroma. And so that energy that was in the photons has now been converted to energy in this carrier molecule and in the ATP. Where is it going? It's going to the Calvin cycle. In the Calvin cycle, we're taking that energy and adding it to carbon dioxide we're also adding hydrogen and we're making high energy molecules like glucose. Now where did the chloroplast come from? If we look at the chloroplast that's found in all plants, it's very similar to a type of cyanobacteria, the algae that's pictured right here. And if we put those next to each other, there are going to be a lot of structures that are the same between the two. So they're going to have a double membrane, their own uh, genome, they're going to have their own thylakoid membrane. It's almost as if we took a cyanobacteria and got rid of all its defense on the outside. And that's how we think chloroplasts came to be. We think at one time endosymbiosis occurred. We had these cyanobacteria or ancestors of cyanobacteria that were taken into a cell. Now already inside there we had a mitochondria and 
Previous to that, the mitochondria had been taken into the cell as well, but as we engulf it, instead of breaking down the cyanobacteria, the cell got rid of those uh, phagocytes around the outside of it and it became the chloroplast that we have today. So what does a chloroplast do? It takes energy from the sun to make high energy molecules that can be utilized to grow the plant or to generate ATP inside mitochondria, and I hope that was helpful.